Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. Our website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. In the next 10 or 12 minutes, I'm going to try to show you some of the highlights from the air show. That's right, the Air Venture, the EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Every July, this may be the largest camping event in the United States, the largest air show in the entire world. It is so great being here, and I feel honored to be able to talk to some of these people, look at some of these great aircraft. And remember my website, teamchicago.tv. As you exit US 41, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, a F-86 Sabre, one of the warbirds from the Korean War, is there to greet you. This is the EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association Annual Fly-In, the EAA Air Venture. Over 550,000 people attended the EAA Air Venture in 2015 as we look at the camping area, this may be the largest camping event in the United States. People camping underneath their airplane wings, people driving up and camping in tents and campers on the huge campgrounds and on the airport. As we look at Paul Pobrezny's F-64 warboard, an airplane that he saved and restored. And it was under his leadership that the EAA was formed right after the Korean War in the 1950s to establish that everybody, all Americans, have the right to fly aircraft, have the right to own aircraft, and have the right to build their own aircraft. If you look at the seminar buildings, the seminar plaza for the EAA. Remember, knowledge is everything when it comes to aviation. The more you know, the greater the sport is. Every American has the right to own, to fly, and to build their own aircraft. As we see these warbirds from World War II, 2015 is the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. First the war ended in Europe in 1945 and then it ended in the Pacific in August of 1945. As we see these warbirds flying overhead, trainers, P-51s are warming up. They are taxiing and they will be taken off to join the trainers flying above. Remember, during World War II, over 100,000 aircraft were built. Over 300,000 pilots were trained to fly these aircraft between December 7th of 1941 and August of 1945. America mobilized. As we see these trainers come by, these aircraft were just as critically important to the victory during World War II is all the fighter planes and all the bombers, all the P-38s, P-51s, P-40s, Corsairs, torpedo bombers, B-25s, B-26, B-17s, B-29s, all the various bombers, all the various fighter aircraft that were used to defeat the Germans, the Italians, and the Japanese and their allies. As the planes come by one more time, listen to that sound. That is the sound of victory. We are so lucky in the United States of America 
that our forefathers were so strong, were so tough, were so smart that could build great aircraft to win the war, to build higher performance aircraft, to have domination in the airspace over the battlefield. And now one of the P-51s come by, the Mustangs, flying overhead. That is the sound of victory. That is the sound that put fear in the heart of the Germans and the Japanese soldiers battling the United States of America. As we hear the sound of the P-51s overhead, remember, it is the can-do attitude. It is the cowboy attitude that led to victory in World War II. And now we're looking at an F-4U Corsair. This is the latest one to be restored. Came from Olympic Washington. And I was so lucky to talk to Brad Pilgrim, and he's going to tell us about this great aircraft. My name is Brad Pilgrim with the Olympic Flight Museum in Olympia, Washington. This is our Goodyear built FG 1D Corsair fighter plane from World War II, Naval and Marine Corps fighter. This is the first time we've had it at Oshkosh. Uh, we've been flying it for a year after an 11 and a half year restoration. It's got a 2,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2800 engine on it with a 13 and a half foot propeller. Uh, it's capable of doing over 400 miles an hour in level flight. We don't do that. Uh, burns about 76 gallons of gas an hour at economical cruising speed, which is about 240 miles an hour. And uh, there's about 35 of these left in the world and about 15 or so that still fly. And as of right now, this is the prettiest one in the world. Um, every time another one gets rebuilt, it's prettier. So, for the time being, though, this one's the most perfect one in existence. So, uh, we keep it in Olympia, Washington at the museum, and our website is olympicflightmuseum.com. And uh, we have this, we have a Mustang and an L-39 jet and a replica Zero and several helicopters and some other stuff. So, if you're ever out towards Seattle, 60 miles south, you'll find this airplane in a hangar. Thank you, Brad Pilgrim. As we look at the three 50 caliber machine guns built into the wing, on the right side, and we're also looking at the nine yards of 50 caliber bullets. That's where the term came from, give them the whole nine yards. As you can see, with the fold-up wings, this was a naval aircraft designed to be held on aircraft carriers, and you can see the very distinctive profile of the Corsair. And now we're looking at, I believe this is Kirby Chambliss, and he's in the Red Bull acrobatic aircraft. Let's check it out. What a great demonstration. This may be the greatest air show in the entire world. As we see this Mitsubishi A6M0 go by, let's talk a little bit about the Zero. 
this was the backbone of the Japanese air power during World War II. It had a 14-cylinder radial engine and over 10,939 of them were built. When they ran a test in 1941, the Zero flew at 329 miles per hour. It was a very high performance aircraft when it went up against the Fighting Tiger P-40. So now we're looking at the Messerschmitt. This is the BF-109 Messerschmitt, first flew May of 1935. In 1937, using a racing engine, this aircraft flew at 379 miles per hour. But the average speed for this Messerschmitt in military trim was 319 miles an hour. And now we're looking at the P-51 Mustang. We are looking at two different models. The B model has got the less enclosed cockpit, and we're looking at the D model, which has the open glass cockpit. This B model with the distinctive red tail represents the aircraft flown by the Sestigi airmen as they accompanied bombers over Europe. They were capable of making it all the way to Germany and back with their drop tanks. The Mustang could fly at 437 miles per hour. The Corsair was a naval aircraft. Top speed on this aircraft was 425 miles an hour using an 18-cylinder radial engine. The P-51 used the V-12 Merlin Packard engine built by the automakers Packard in Warren, Ohio. And now we're looking at the P-38 Lightning, twin engines using the Allison V-12 engine. This heavy fighter built by Lockheed first flew in January of 1939. The top speed on this aircraft was 400 and 43 miles per hour. High performance aircraft is what dominated the airspace over Europe and in the Pacific. And that is one reason the Americans won World War II. We are now looking at the F-22. The United States Air Force considers the F-22 as a critical component in its tactical air power. It states that the aircraft is unmatched by any known or projected fighter. This is a supersonic twin-engine single-seat tactical aircraft, and it first flew in September of 1997. We are now looking at a simulator for the Lockheed Martin F-35. Personnel from Lockheed Martin is allowing participants at the EAA Air Venture to try their hand at flying this great aircraft, the F-35. As we can see on the screen, this is a very capable single-engine, single-seat, supersonic aircraft. And I was very fortunate to talk to Kevin McCormick from Lockheed Martin, and he's going to tell us more about the F-35. Good morning. My name is Kevin McCormick. I'm with Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company. We're here at the EAA, and we've got the F-35 cockpit demonstrator on display here. The F-35 is the multi-role stealth aircraft. They'll be operational here for the U.S. Air Force, the United States Marine Corps, as well as the United States Navy. 
It is operational also with three of our foreign military sales customers at this time. So you'll see a lot of activity here coming through with people talking about how they fly the aircraft. We have three different variants. The F-35A is for the U.S. Air Force and eight of our international partners, as well as three of our foreign military sales customers. The F-35B is for the U.S. Marine Corps and the Royal Navy. And we also have the F-35C, which is operated by the United States Marine Corps, as well as the United States Navy. Be able to identify the three different variants as we come into the cockpit simulator by configuring it to whatever configuration you want to fly. So if you want to fly the A, which is the Air Force variant, we can do that. The B for the U.S. Marine Corps or the C for the U.S. Navy. Thank you, Kevin McCormick. I should point out that the F-35 first flew in December of 2006, as we see on the simulator landing this aircraft on an aircraft carrier. What a wonderful simulator. And I should point out that the United Kingdom, Italy, Australia, Canada, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Turkey all contributed to the development of the F-35. Maybe the most capable tactical aircraft ever built to this point. And the entertainment on Boeing Plaza on Tuesday, July 21st, is the Little River Band. Their website is littleriverband.com. This group is out of Australia. For more information on the EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association, go to EAA.org, airventure.org, and make plans in 2016, the dates in Oshkosh, Whitman Field is July 25th through 31st. Don't forget, teamchicago.tv, walkwithdan.com.